Hello everyone, Matt here from PC Games N. I'm joined by Rich. Hello. And we are talking today about Destiny 2's weapons. Now we're going to essentially put together a little primer for you. So either if you've never played Destiny before and you don't understand sort of like how weapons work in the game, or if you've played Destiny and you want to know what's different for Destiny 2. Now the key thing is, is that in Destiny weapons are not just sort of like guns to shoot that are based on very baseline things. It is an RPG as much as it is a shooter. So there's lots of things that govern how weapons work. We're first going to start with weapon types. So Rich, run me through what sort of weapons we can expect to see. So uh, many weapons are returning from the original. A couple have been added and one has been sort of moved around. Uh, in the primary weapon slot, which does just as basic uh, kinetic damage without an elemental attached, um, there are six uh, weapons in that. And it looks like each of those is going to have a elemental variety in the secondary weapon slot, which has now been replaced by the energy mm -hmm. weapon slot. So these six are uh, auto rifles, which are assault rifles essentially, pulse rifles, which are three round burst rifles, sidearms, which have been moved from the secondary weapon slot into this slot. Uh, they are sort of small personal pistols, hand cannons, which are much larger, harder hitting pistols, scout rifles, which are uh, semi-automatic or long ranged uh, rifles. And then there's a new one which has been added in Destiny 2, the SMG. Um, which you've played the yeah uh, yeah the demo, really right? super work? fast firing you know really satisfying um, probably in terms of what I played um, I mean it obviously fits like a submachine gun like, like we know from the modern day sort of equivalents but I'd say they felt a bit more like it if you've ever played anything with like an MP5K in it like a really really fast like empties the magazine in kind of a couple of seconds okay it feels like that you know a super quick to take down weapon okay interesting. And uh, so that's, that's going to be the six in the primary and the energy weapon slots. And then there's another six in what's called the power weapon slot, which replaces heavy weapons from the original. Uh, these six, again, some of them are returning, some of them are new. So there are rocket launchers, they're back. Uh, grenade launchers, which have similar stats to rocket launchers, but um, they're sort of a bit larger magazines and faster firing. And they're kind of more of an arc, aren't yeah. they, rather than a straight line fire, yeah. Yeah, uh, so they're new. Uh, swords are back. It looks like there's going to be some more varieties of swords. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, a hunter wielding a, a, a shorter length sword than we like saw. Like a in the samurai mission. sword, isn't it? As opposed yeah. to the bigger swords that were in the first game. Like a katana rather than a broadsword, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, there's also and also the special weapons from the original have been moved into the heavy weapon slots. So that's uh, shotguns, sniper rifles, and fusion rifles, which you sort of charge up before you fire. Mm -hmm. Now, the difference between um, all of this is that um, power weapons use a, a more limited resource, don't they? So their, their ammo, you have to you, you don't find it as often, let's say, as you would your other weapons. So yeah. all those six weapons that you've, you've just described there um, are kind of like, you'll, you'll pull those out as a backup, won't you, uh, for very specific engagements, mm. whereas the weapons in your other two slots from the first six you described are more of what we generally be using from moment to moment. Yeah. So the the interesting um, distinction that's been added between the, the first two weapon slots, the primary and the energy weapons, um, the energy weapons all carry an element, as we mentioned. Enemies have elemental shields. So if you attack that shield with an energy weapon of the corresponding element, then it'll drop faster. And uh, this has been moved around in the, um, in the sequel because primary weapons that had elemental damage in the original were very, very powerful in PvE. So this looks like a little bit of a balancing act uh, Bungie have been doing. They've been wrestling with this in the original. This is their solution. We also hear that energy weapons will do slightly more damage to enemy uh, guardians in PvP when they're in, their middle of, in the middle of their supers. And it looks like all supers will be roaming this time around. So energy weapons are going to be your solution to take mm -hmm. them down. Sure. Now, uh, as an RPG, uh, the weapons will be kind of graded. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess the big sort of elements there is you've got, uh, you've got weapons that are considered legendaries and exotics. Yeah. But explain to me the overall system on how, how we get grades. So uh, as with any RPG, rarities start with common. They're just gray or white. You'll move past them very, very quickly. You'll move past uncommon, which are green. Again, very, very quickly. Blues, rares, you'll start using a little bit more often. But by the time you get to the end game, the grades that matter are, as you say, legendary, purple, and exotic, or gold. Um, it doesn't look like too much is changing from the original in this mm -hmm. system. Exotics, you can only equip one of, an exotic weapon and an exotic armor piece. And they carry very special perks, which change the behavior of the gun or the armor in really significant ways ways that you can sort of build around. Whereas legendaries are your sort of, you know, basic, they, they function in the same way as every other weapon, 
uh, but they are the meat of your end game build. So that's how to think of them. In many ways, legendaries are more important actually than exotics because you'll equip more of them. So it's important to get them on point, but exotics add a little bit of spice. Mm -hmm. Now, the, uh, that system of rarity obviously links into how weapons uh, have stats because mm -hmm. obviously the, the higher up through that rarity scale is obviously the better those stats are going to be. Generally. Now, yeah. explain to me sort of like what are the stats that we can expect to see from a weapon and how does that sort of like determine how a weapon operates? Well, the important one to consider here is uh, impact versus rate of fire. In the original game, um, weapon damage and damage per second was balanced between these two. So impact is basically damage per bullet, and rate of fire is obviously how many bullets it can put out. Um, in the, it looks like that's returning in the second game. Impact returns as a stat. Rate of fire has been replaced by uh, rounds per minute, but it, it looks like that's functionally yeah. identical. Mm -hmm. So we can sort of expect weapon damage to be balanced in the similar sort of way. Uh, just as a for instance, uh, I think in the original there were three hand cannon uh, damage archetypes where you had very, very high uh, impact hand cannons balanced with a slow rate of fire. Uh, and then on the opposite side of the scale, obviously you had the inverse. Um, so, and, and Bungie have been quite picky and, and finickety about balancing and tweaking the damage values across all these types because players inevitably would find the damage archetype that was most effective for DPS, and then they'd use that in PvP and PvE. So that's something that we'll be looking out for when the original, when the uh, the sequel drops. Which damage archetype does the most damage per second? Um, otherwise, uh, other stats returning uh, are stability, which basically affects how much uh, the the gun kicks with each bullet. Range, which is obviously how how much uh, damage it does at extended ranges, and what at one point damage fall off sets in. There's a new stat called handling, mm -hmm. which is interesting. Um, there were some invisible stats uh, that you couldn't see in your stat screen in the original game. We think, we're guessing, handling is going to bring in some of those. Recoil direction is one, which affects the way that the gun travels, uh, the direction that the gun travels as recoil sets in. Uh, and uh, equip speed, I think, was another, which mm -hmm. we could see bundled into handling as well, which is how quickly that the, you can change between different weapons. Sure. Now, the other thing uh, that's important about weapons, not only is it their stats, but they also can be modified and they have perks. Mm. So explain to me, how, how do I unlock a mod? How do I apply them? And what do perks mean? Well, perks uh, are, as, as, you, as you gain experience in the game, uh, you, can un you can apply that experience to a weapon and unlock perks. Uh, perks in the original had that there was an you know, extended perk tree on each gun, so you'd unlock perk nodes progressively as mm -hmm. you gain more experience. And perks basically change the behavior of the gun in interesting ways. Some added uh, a, a certain amount to a gun's stat. So if you were looking to um, minim enable your sights to stay on target, you'd look for a perk that increased stability, thereby re uh, reducing the amount of kick with each bullet. Mm -hmm. Things like that are very useful. Then there were other ones which, uh, so Mulligan, for instance, refunded bullets occasionally if you missed um, a shot. So it looks like that system is broadly staying in place. We've seen some perks come back, uh, but that's one that we'll have to wait until release to say more about. As for mods, um, we're not sure. This is probably the single biggest unknown about the weapon system right now. It looks like uh, there might be attachments or items that you can pick up in quests that you can then attach to your guns and change some aspect of them, perhaps. There's uh, footage on YouTube of Guardians walking around with flashlights attached to their guns. But um, I don't know. I mean, you've played it, right? So yeah, did you see anything? I, I know, I've seen uh, definitely scopes and uh, like reflex sights and stuff like that. There's also was a sidearm that was silenced, whether that silencer is actually built into the gun or is a mod that has been picked up or earned in some way. I, I, I couldn't tell you so far, but that is say that will be something interesting to find out in the future. Sure. Right, so uh, just to to bring this video to a close, um, what are your thoughts on, on balancing and the overall sort of general picture of weaponry? Well, what's interesting here is that with two essentially primaries in, in the first two weapon slots and uh, things like shotguns and sniper rifles being moved into the heavy slot, um, this it theoretically means that Guardians would have less damage per second available to them than in the original, right? Because in the original, uh, the way that you know you take down a raid boss these days is you use a sniper rifle uh, plus a heavy weapon to do damage per second. Black Spindle, for instance, uh, is a sniper rifle with a perk that if you land successive precision shots, you get a free magazine back. And sniper rifles do huge amounts of damage. Mm -hmm. So landing repeated precision shots with something like Black Spindle is a great way to do DPS. And then if you run out of ammo, you can switch to a heavy. Um, and I wonder if Bungie saw that coming. Uh, I wonder if... Uh, 
they weren't satisfied with that if they always intended for sniper rifles to be DPS. They must have seen it coming once they added mm -hmm. something like Black Spindle into the game. But this current system strikes me as a little bit neater. Uh, now, in your heavy weapon slot, you will have just one weapon to do massive DPS. And um, elemental primaries, they'll be useful if there's uh, an elemental weakness that mm -hmm. a boss has, for instance, which we might see. Uh, but otherwise, it looks like power weapons are your DPS and uh, otherwise not so much. So perhaps raids will be balanced in that way. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, the new Warlock uh, seems to have an empowering Rift class ability, which adds DPS. Mm -hmm. And this is on a normal cooldown, a normal ability cooldown, whereas in the past you'd use a Titan with weapons of light as their super, and you know supers are on a much slower cooldown. So now we'll have, it looks as though we'll have more uh, DPS enhancing abilities available to us more regularly. Mm -hmm. um, so this is, you know, we're just sort of, just just guessing at a new PvE meta taking shape here. And it seems like a, a much neater one than we had at the uh, end of the original. Sure. So once again, Destiny's Weapons seems to be very fascinating for the sequel. Uh, there will almost certainly be more information as we go on. This video is being done just before we head out to E3. Mm -hmm. Rich will be playing more at E3, so be sure to check out Soul Like the Channel later on. Arc Strider stuff. Yes, Arc Strider is on the way in. Until next time, have fun, take care. Take care.